Religious images and icons have been the subject of art for centuries. In colonial Philippines, religious paintings popularly adorned home altars as a sign of faith and piety, until photography and more secular subjects were introduced at the end of the 19th century. While key figures and important saints are recognizable for traditional attributes or symbols in their iconography, the artist had the freedom to express their own views and values in the way the composition was executed. This painting by Damien Domingo, one of the few known surviving signed works by the artist, can be viewed as a remarkable and detailed work of art on its own, but it can also be appreciated as a rare entry in the canon of depicting reverence to the seat of St. Peter in Rome, and perhaps a comment or the artist's personal interpretation of the divine power vested in the Catholic Church. Damien Domingo was known in 19th century Philippines for his detailed portraits of government officials and members of the ruling elite, as well as tipos del país, or renditions of types of inhabitants and their attire of the country. He became the first director of the first art school open to all students, regardless of race. An examination of his works shows his mastery of Western principles in art and familiarity with conventions of religious iconography. The completion of Gian Lorenzo Bernini's Chair of St. Peter or Cathedra Petri in the Vatican in the 17th century inspired several artists to create drawings and prints of the Italian master's massive sculpture that circulated from Europe to the Americas and to Asia. Majority of extant images, however, show more fascination with the design of Bernini than the subject matter of the work. Amid the many schisms of the Christian faith, the seat of St. Peter served as the physical and metaphorical evidence of the direct connection of the divine to the Holy See. At the bottom of Domingo's work reads, Cathedra de San Pedro in Roma, set against the base of white marble steps. Above the title and to the right, we see the artist's signature on the step overhang, Damian Domingo Lopinto. This particular phrasing in the formal composition led scholar and national artist for historical literature, Carlos Carino, to speculate that this work may have been the earliest of the three extant pieces in the Ongpin collection, all on loan to Ayala Museum. Above the title and crossed to lay on the steps are a branch of palm fronds and a papal cross, symbols of martyrdom and the papal office. Above the steps and on the central panel of the altar, we see the papal triregnum or three-tiered crown and the crossed keys of St. Peter, forming the coat of arms of the Holy See. On the altar stands a gilded image of the patroness of the Philippines, the Immaculate Conception of Mary, identifiable by the moon at her feet, flowing garments, hands clasped in prayer, and a faint hint of a crown of stars. We see a relatively plainly constructed but gilded chair mounted above the altar. A dove, radiating light, flies above a small cloud, touching the uppermost part of the chair's backrest. On either side of the altar stand two bishops one in black, the other in white. Their similar attire, attributes, and even facial features provide little clues to their identities, but a comparison with Bernini's sculpture proves useful in their identification. In the altarpiece, the chair of St. Peter is literally held up by the four doctors of the Eastern and Western churches. While all four were bishops, Bernini placed in front and on the left and right Saints Ambrose and Augustine, leaders of the Latin tradition. While Saint Ambrose is not well known in the Philippines, certainly the same could not be said of Saint Augustine. The Augustinian order was one of the most active religious orders in the Philippines and established many educational institutions across the archipelago. Did the artist intentionally depict the two bishops under a veil of anonymity? Their marked difference in posture seems to indicate otherwise, but without evidence for the artist's rationale. We can only speculate. 
the entire tableau stands against a marble arch, framed by two ribbed square Corinthian columns, quite similar to the design of the actual columns behind the Vatican altarpiece. Notable in Domingo's work is the addition of drawn curtains. Many European artists in the 15th century have used the image of drawn curtains to indicate a revelation of what was concealed or unknown. Domingo would have been familiar with such visual conventions and likely employed the imagery for a similar purpose. Thus, the artist reveals to us not another repetition or study of Bernini's masterful sculpture in the Vatican, but the artist's own deep understanding of and adherence to the foundations and traditions of the Catholic Church.